In this lesson, I'm going to be going over the properties of water. So in class, we talked a little bit about um, how water is a polar molecule. It forms um, polar covalent bonds there between the oxygen and the hydrogen atoms. And so now we're going to talk more specifically about properties of water. Water is what life evolved in, and all living things are mostly made of water. In fact, depending on what type of cell you're talking about, they may be as much as 95% water. So all the chemical reactions that happen in living things are water. Many, many living things themselves live in water. It's the majority of the planet. Um, and of course, all living things need water to survive. So water, I would say, is the most vital molecule on Earth. We talked in class about how water is a polar molecule. It's a covalent it's got covalent bonds, but these are pol polar covalent bonds in which um, the electrons between the hydrogen and the oxygen are not shared equally. I talked in class about how oxygen is an electron hog, and because of that, the electrons spend more time around the oxygen than around the hydrogen, and this creates a separation of charge within the molecule itself. So if you look at any given water molecule, you'll see that the hydrogen atoms are slightly positively charged, and the other end of the molecule around the oxygen atom, um, it is slightly uh, negatively charged due to the extra electrons hanging around there and that means that water itself it's not quite an ion but it's similar to an ion it has this internal charge and that causes all kinds of results in um, any kind of substance or interaction with water so due to the separation of charge water molecules are attracted to each other so if you just had a cup of water all of those molecules are attracted to each other because they're slightly charged the oxygen end of one water molecule is going to be attracted to the hydrogen end of another water molecule and they're going to stick together i like to say water is sticky so you see here all these little um, dotted lines indicating that this water molecule is sort of attracted to itself i talked in class about these little delta charges this means a slight positive and a slight negative charge. The force of attraction holding these water molecules together, we call it cohesion. And we also call this a hydrogen bond. Okay, so the co cohesion is a weak hydrogen bond between water molecules. And that, again, accounts for the unique properties of water, which we're going to discuss. So hydrogen bonding is what causes water to behave the way it does, and it's very important for life. First of all, because of hydrogen bonding, Water can travel up the roots of plants, all the way up to the leaves. And this is because the water molecules are sticking together. So water in the soil um, is pulled along by other water that's already in the roots. And more and more water is pulled up into the roots. That water is pulled up the stem by water molecules just sticking together, coming up these specialized tubes in the, in the trunk of the tree called xylem and then water is pulled into the leaf and through more xylem tubes within the leaf and eventually pulled out into the atmosphere. So basically water evaporating from the leaf removes the water molecules out of the leaf and all of the water molecules that are sticking together pull each other all the way from the roots. It's a very strong force. In addition to that, there is adhesion playing a role, and that is the water molecules actually sticking to the sides of the xylem tubes, and that helps the water to be pulled along as well. So because of hydrogen bonding, water can move from the roots all the way up to the leaves of a tree. Because of hydrogen bonding, water shows other unique properties. It shows a high surface tension, which means it acts like it has a skin. So you've probably seen things floating around on the water, like these leaves. You've probably seen pictures of bugs that can walk on the water. Um, sticks I've seen floating on the water. And this is due to water's high surface tension. So when you look at um, water molecules, imagine them down underneath the water here. In every direction, each water molecule is being attracted to each other water molecule. But when you look at the surface of um, water, of like a lake or a pond, above the surface there's no water. Above the surface is just air. So these water molecules at the surface are being pulled down. They're being attracted to the water molecules below them. And because of that, they act like a skin at the surface of the water. 
Because of hydrogen bonding, water moderates temperatures. Water has what's called a high specific heat. I hope you learned about that in chemistry, but it has a high specific heat, which means it can absorb more heat from the environment without changing temperature than most substances can do. It absorbs a lot of heat from the surrounding environment. And the reason is because some of that energy is going to be absorbed as, as energy that, that breaks those hydrogen bonds. So the hydrogen bonds contain energy. I told you that bonds have energy in them and hydrogen bonds do. And so there's energy required to break the hydrogen bond. And we can think of that as energy that's absorbed into um, the water without changing temperature. So the effect of this, of course, is that cities like Dakar along the coastline have lower mean temperatures than cities further inland, such as Timbuktu. And you can see they're at about the same latitude and um, different longitude, but they're at about the same latitude. They should have similar climates, but because of the effect of the Atlantic Ocean here, you see that um, Dakar is much milder, and we've seen this, of course, in Florida as well. Also, because of hydrogen bonding, water has a cooling effect. Evaporating water draws heat with it due to its high heat of vaporization. So it has a high specific heat. It also has a high heat of vaporization, which means it takes a lot of energy to get water to evaporate um, from surfaces. And so a lot, of, a lot of energy has to go in. A lot of heat has to go in to get it to evaporate. And, of course, this helps organisms to cool their bodies. Evaporation of sweat from your body draws a lot of moisture away. And, of course, if you're a dog, you don't sweat, but you pant, and that works the same way because they're, they're, the water evaporating from inside their, their throat and from their tongue and their mouth cools their body. Also, because of hydrogen bonding, uh, frozen water floats. Unlike most substances, water, when it's frozen, is less dense than liquid water. Very unusual for a liquid to behave that way, but it's because the polar nature of water keeps the molecules from getting too close together as they're freezing. So it forms kind of a lattice. Think of it like a crystal. These molecules don't want to get too close together because of the um, force of repulsion of the positives, the positive charges. They don't, they don't want to come too close together. And so it forms this lattice, which means that frozen water is less dense. What that means for living things is that as water freezes in lakes and ponds, it freezes from the top down instead of from the bottom up. And of course, you can imagine what it would be like for life in the ponds and lakes and even in the ocean if water froze from the bottom up. It would mean in some areas of the world, it would remain frozen forever. It would always be frozen under there. Um, instead, what we have is only freezing at the surface and when the when the air temperature warms, it's able to thaw out. And so we have a mixing of nutrients, we have warming of the lakes and ponds and even of the oceans during times when it's warmer in the atmosphere. And it also means that below the frozen layer, life underneath basically has having a constant temperature because it the 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 ice on top it acts like kind of an insulating layer. So you don't underneath really get below freezing, which means life can survive. It's probably not terribly pleasant for these fish to be under the ice, but they can survive. It's not below freezing. Finally, the last unique property of water due to hydrogen bonding is that it is a universal solvent. So any polar substances or charged substances can easily dissolve in water to form solutions. And remember, the solute is the solid portion that's dissolving, and the solvent in this case is water. Um, and this is important to life because biological systems are full of solutions. We have blood as a solution, sap in a tree as a solution, the cytoplasm inside cells is a solution. And so when something like salt, which is an ionic compound, dissolves in water, it fully dissociates. Water, when it dissolves, um, pulls these uh, ions out of the salt crystal and fully surrounds the ions due to charges. These are called hydration shells, but this means that things can fully dissolve in there. Now those substances that can fully dissolve we call hydrophilic. Hydro meaning water, philic meaning lover. So these are substances that love water. Those that don't dissolve such, such like the salt 
we call hydrophobic, phobic meaning fearing. This is a substance that fears water. We also call these nonpolar. Substances that are nonpolar do not dissolve in water well. And the familiar substances probably to you would be oils and fats. And you're probably familiar with the fact that oil doesn't dissolve in water. It is hydrophobic. So that's it for the major uh, unique properties we see in water due to hydrogen bonding.